Welcome to ZDNet's DIY IT Project Lab. Today we're looking at under $400 3D printers that are perfect for back to school. We have two very different printers that will appeal to two very different types of students. Today's episode is a little science project and a little show and tell. The key takeaway is that 3D printers have become so inexpensive that they're affordable for individual students to own and use. My name is David Gewertz, and you're watching ZDNet's 3D Printing Discovery Series, which is part of my DIY IT column. In addition to exploring 3D printers, we fly drones and regularly dive deep into advanced geekery for fun and profit. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you that I'm working on a bunch of interesting projects. If you'd like to know when a new project is up, feel free to click the subscribe button and the little notify bell in the corner over there. In front of me are two inexpensive printers. To your left is the Creality CR10. This is a monster printer at a very affordable price, ranging from around $350 to about $425, depending on whether it's on sale or if you can find a coupon. This one was sent to me by the nice folks at Gearbest who regularly run sales. On the right is the New Matter Mod T. When they sent me this last year, it was listed at $399, but it's now available for sale directly from New Matter for $269. These are two very, very different printers. The most obvious difference is size. You can pretty much fit the Mod T inside the CR10. This little gray block cuboid represents the maximum build area of the Mod T. It is dwarfed by that of the CR10. This is important because the very tiny build area of the Mod T can be quite limiting. The CR10, though, is a lot more fiddly. You have to assemble it, although that's relatively easy. You attach the gantry, plug in the various cables, and then level the bed, which is tedious, but a relatively simple process. It's a matter of turning some thumb wheels until paper slides evenly under the printhead. All told, including the leveling process, assembly and tuning took me a little under two hours. As I showed in my unboxing, the Mod T comes fully assembled. Of particular importance is the fish tank shell surrounding the print area. If you want to buy a 3D printer for your younger children, this may be the one for you. The plastic shell means that your kids can watch the printer print, but you don't have to worry that they'll reach inside and possibly burn themselves. Print heads on 3D printers are often in the 190 to 220 Celsius range, which is 374 to 428 degrees Fahrenheit, in other words, high. The bed on the CR10 is also heated, which makes the printer far more versatile, but at 60 degrees C or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, it's also quite toasty. If you have young kids around you, you probably don't want the CR10. The potential for small hands getting burned is pretty high. On the other hand, if you have children of high school age or you're in college, the CR10 is going to be the far better choice. You can print much larger items on the CR10. I didn't have time to print anything super large for this episode, but you can see, for example, that these T-Rex jaws would just never fit into the build area for the Mod T. Neither would these mountain range prints. These jaws showcase some of the amazing educational projects you can do with a 3D printer. I downloaded this model from Thingiverse for free and it cost about a dollar's worth of filament to print. It's one thing to see a picture of a T-Rex skull in a book or on TV or even one in a museum, but to be able to look at it in your own hands provides a much, much more kinesthetic experience. Thingiverse at thingiverse.com is an amazing resource for students and educators. There's a special education section which spotlights some awesome projects and 3D printable models all for free. Definitely check it out. These two mountain ranges are another interesting project for 3D printing. This lower range contains Mount Rainier, a 14,410 foot peak in Washington state. This higher range model contains Mount Everest in Asia. It's the world's largest mountain at 29,029 feet above sea level. What makes these two models interesting isn't just the terrain features, but that they model the height of the base terrain above sea level. This is a great way to learn geography, geology, and earth history, all with hands-on models that allow you to get a really good feel for the difference between the two regions. I printed these as smaller squares just to get them done in time for this episode, but the CR10 has so much build capacity that you could print these quite a bit bigger and use them as demonstration models in front of a classroom. Beyond size, there are other differences between these two printers. Because it doesn't have a heated bed, the Mod T can only handle PLA. That's a very versatile filament, but if you want more exotic filaments, the more robust ABS, flexible filaments, and more, you'll want to use the CR10 with its heated bed. I could not print these hominid jaws on the Mod T. 
This is the Homo naledi jaw found in the Rising Star Cave near Johannesburg, South Africa. This fossil replica was from a hominin, an extinct pre-humanoid species that lived between 335,000 and 236,000 years ago. The Mod T does all its slicing, converting to layer-style printing in the cloud. It just completely borked on many of the more complex models I tried to send it. On the other hand, when I put this model in Cura, which is a free slicer that works with the CR10, it output G-code quickly, and as you can see, the model produced on the CR10 is gorgeous. While the Mod T is cheaper, safer for smaller hands, and requires less futzing than the CR10, its quality is not that great. I tried printing this puzzle from the Mod T store, and in my first try, it printed with the bottom layer misaligned, and in the second try, had some pretty obvious layer separation. And that was after the new matter slicer simply died on my attempts to upload more complex objects. Most of the objects I've showed so far are models, with the exception of the gray blocks. They were all printed on the CR10. But 3D printers are great for more than just printing models. They are very useful for printing tools and resources for students as well. I put a bunch of tools on the CR10 to print in a single batch. What you're looking at now is the CR10 printing a test tube holder and two holders for Arduino bench testing. Here's the finished test tube holder, and here's one holder that is just holding an Arduino Uno, while this one is holding both an Arduino and an associated breadboard. Note that you can print some very fine and delicate objects like this very thin plastic separator. Before I printed this, I looked very closely at the 3D printed model. I realized that pulling it off the build plate might cause it to crack. So I used Simplify 3D to lay out the objects and put rafts under each one. Then when I printed the set, I could be more rough about removing them from the build plate because they were protected by the raft. Then I could separate the raft gently and get my final model. I've been working with 3D printers now for almost two years and they still astound me. You can imagine what you can do with printers like this for all kinds of engineering, science, and even robotics projects. They have application in medical study, geology, geography, history, math, and so much more. It's an exciting time for students and educators. The availability of these inexpensive printers opens amazing opportunities for hands-on exploration and discovery. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or the idea of printing your own dino skulls makes you roar with excitement, go ahead and chomp that like button over there. I'm David Gewurz for ZDNet's DIYIT. Go forth and build something great.